Hello everyone. In this introduction to C-Sharp video, we are going to learn all about sequence of events. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So what is a sequence of events? Well, in its simplest terms, the best way to describe what a sequence of events is or what a sequence of events does is it manipulates, for example, a scene in your game. So if you've got something that happens, let's say a cutscene, and you want things to change on screen at any given time, then you would use something called a sequence of events. And this is very similar to how a coroutine works, but obviously we go a little bit further into this depending on what we want to do with it. So what we are going to do in this video is we're going to play around with many things that we've had working previously. And if you remember, we have some text on our screen and we also have a cube which will play around and do things. And at the moment, we have a script which does indeed change our text. Can't get my words out there. So I'm actually going to remove that component of our text. And what I want to do is I want this cube to start moving, then stop, text to change, and then cube to move, stop, text change again, and move the cube again. So that is like a bit of a sequence going on. And we're going to do that all inside one single script. So remember, a sequence of events can control everything that goes on any specific given time. So let's right click, create a new script. And I'm just going to call it sequence. Now, because I'm going to be dealing with some UI, I do need to declare that namespace at the top. So if you are dealing with UI in whatever you're creating, then yes, you will need to do the same. If not, don't worry too much. Remember, this is just showing you how all of this works and the lines of code necessary to create our sequence of events here. So using Unity Engine dot UI. And as I said, it's done inside a coroutine. And we learned about coroutines quite a few videos ago now. Um, but for all intents and purposes, let's create a new one. I enumerator my sequence. And remember, it does indeed underline because it's expecting some kind of waiting to occur. Uh, for void start, I'm going to have start coroutine in the brackets, my sequence. Remember, we've declared coroutines before, so we know what's going on here. All that's left to do is start that sequence of events. So what do we want to happen here? Well, whenever the scene starts, I want it to wait for two seconds before anything happens. So yield, return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, two semicolon and let's also put an annotation at the end so double slash and let's say we are waiting next what we need to do is let's have our cube start moving so let's declare that as a variable as well so we need to say public game object my cube at which point we can then say we need to reference that script that is in the cube that moves it, and we need to turn it on. So we can then say my cube dot get component and in spiky brackets the name of that component, which is actually the script name itself. And if you remember, it is indeed called movement. So we can use that as its own component. So let's type movement. And that's how. Basically, we can reference scripts as components via a C-sharp script. So even if you've got a script called red wall or something like that, then you can indeed reference that as a component like this. So mycube.getComponentMovement.enabled equals true. And let's put an annotation there as well just to say started cube moving. And now let's wait for, let's say, three seconds. So we can actually copy that line of code and paste it there. And we'll say three. We are waiting for three seconds. After three seconds, let's have our text change to something. So let's also declare that as a variable. So we can say public game object my 
text. So let's have our text change to something. I don't know. We'll think of it as we get there. So my text dot get component spiky brackets text with a capital T. And you can see here that this is like an amalgamation of lots of things we've learned previously. It's crazy how many things all linked together, all many different styles, and they can all come together to one single script. It's kind of cool. So uh, parentheses dot text equals move cube because why not with a semicolon I will say changing the text and let's say after another second we stop the cube moving so we can use that line of code once again to say one second and we'll say cube waiting to stop and then after that one second let's use this line of code once again and put false and cube stopped and then let's say after half a second so we can use that once again 0.5 f and we'll say so this can say wait half a second and then after half a second we can make the text change again so we can say it stopped and say changing text again that's all good and then after another two seconds so let's wait another two seconds and let's get the cube moving again so we can use uh, this line of code here so then the cube will start moving again and then let's add something else into the mix let's have another variable so public int my num so obviously by default that's going to be one so as soon as the cube starts moving let's say my num equals one two three four five because why not and then let's wait for another second Um, in fact, we'll change that to say waiting a second and then we'll just change the text once again to yay and then save. So realistically, what all of this means is that we are creating a controlled scene here. That's what a sequence of events is really good for. So we're controlling what's going on at any given time just by using a few lines of code. Now, if we head back into Unity and let's just attach our sequence to our camera. It doesn't really matter what it gets attached to. You can have its own object if you want to, as long as everything here is attached correctly. So the cube goes on there and the text goes on there. And I'm going to make sure my camera is still selected so we can see this number change. So if we press play, we'll see this entire sequence play out as we just expect it to. And there's our number that changes. Cool. So the only thing I noticed there is the text is a bit big to get everything fitting on properly uh, but essentially that's it that's that's our sequence of events occurring so we wanted our cube to move then our text to change and then our cube to stop text to change cube to move and the number to change as well and then the text to change again so just to give you a bit of perspective on this you could use this similar to creating a cutscene. So if you've got some characters that move around, you would use that sequence of events to move the character, make it say something, move a different character, wait for three seconds, say something else, move another character, uh, make something fall, wait another second, something else happen. So you can utilize a sequence of events to control all kinds of things in a scene. As if you want to know any more, let me know in the comments uh, below. And don't forget, as I said earlier, subscribe, see more, hit the notification bell, and I will see you around in another video. Thanks very much for watching, guys.